I talk about the carnivore diet a lot. And yet somehow, me, Lily Kane, the girl who talks about and eats a bunch of meat, has somehow turned into the president of the It's Okay to Eat Plants Foundation. Here's what's happening. Most of my YouTube videos are created based off of the comment section and what I talk about with clients one-on-one -on -one and the questions that they have, I help turn it into YouTube videos. Though nowadays, more than ever, I feel most of the time spent during my coaching calls are me trying to convince people it's okay to eat a vegetable. I'm like hosting daily veggie intervention sessions and I'm like, how did I get here? I feel like over the years I've been very consistent with my messaging that some people may need to avoid vegetables. Certain people may need to put a boot to the fruit. Other people may want to kick nuts in the butt. Yeah. Though I have never said, go to your grocery store, buy all the plants you can find, put them in a bag, get on a boat, go out into the middle of the ocean, tie an anchor around the bag of plants, Throw it off the boat and save your family and friends from all these plants. How did, what, where did I say that anywhere? I think a carnivore diet can be so simple, nourishing, and benefit a lot of people, but I'm never gonna say a salad is dangerous or it's poison. I, to this day, will have family members call me and ask me, Lily, do you think I'm unhealthy because I had a salad today for lunch? And I'm like, I think it's unhealthy you're asking me this question. There's quite an eye-opening book called The 48 Laws of Power, all about how to gain control over people and have more power. One of the things that the book says to be more successful is to create a cult. Mm. I will not go there. I would rather die unsuccessful and poor before I ever stimulate cult-like thinking. I have seen other people do this. I have seen them be more successful. I will not go there. It drives me a little bit cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, when people compare drinking coffee being the equivalent to glugging down cyanide. Maybe for some people, eating an apple is the equivalent to eating a hand grenade, but for most people, if the worst thing you're eating in a day is an apple, my word, you must be healthier than 99.9% .9 of people because an apple, to me, is not unhealthy. I eat them, but yes, if someone's eating liver, eggs, sardines, steak, and then an apple, technically, the apple would be the least nutritious thing that person ate in the day, but that doesn't mean apples have no nutrients, and it doesn't mean someone's going to be unhealthy eating an apple. It's not that I've necessarily changed my mind on the way in which a carnivore diet can help people. I have just changed the way I feel about it. If a carnivore diet is going to be portrayed as the best way, the only way, the right way to eat, and if you know anybody who eats plants, you best be writing on a sticky note, ding dong, and slapping it on their forehead. That's what I don't agree with. Again, a carnivore diet can be a very healing and healthy way to eat, but it can become unhealthy real quick when we start thinking that everybody needs to avoid all things that aren't meat all the time, especially when a carnivore diet can be unhealthy in the long run. What? Yes, a carnivore diet in the long run can be damaging to one's health if not done correctly. So I wanna shift to now talking about that because I don't want anyone's health to suffer, but also I feel like once I talk about how a carnivore diet can be damaging in the long run and how to fix it and prevent that from happening, then it will be more clear as to how I think about a carnivore diet. I kind of think about a carnivore diet as if you're juggling steak knives. If you get it right, it's thrilling, but if you drop a knife, ooh, you chop off a finger. Firstly, the word carnivore is pretty vague because that could mean someone's only eating chicken breast and somebody else is eating chicken breast, cheese, ground beef, eggs, salmon, oysters, ribeyes, butter, chicken skins, bone broth, and both are eating carnivore. And I'm telling you, they're gonna feel differently and have different health outcomes. I'm not somebody who promotes eating only one food because it's really hard to get all of the vitamins and minerals in the right amounts solely eating one food. Now, is it that big of a deal if someone only eats chicken for a day? No. Or if someone only eats ground beef for 90 days? No. But if someone tells me they're not doing well on carnivore, my first thought is, well, they likely aren't getting in all of the nutrients they need 
Otherwise, if they had all the nutrients, they really shouldn't be having any issues. And when I say nutrients, it's a pretty broad term. So to make it very easy to understand, nutrients breaks into macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients being proteins, fats, and carbs, with carbs technically being non-essential, though they can be helpful. And micronutrients being vitamins and minerals, vitamins being vitamin A, C, D, E, K, B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B7, B9, B12, and minerals like calcium, copper, choline, iron, magnesium, manganese, selenium, sodium, phosphorus, potassium, and zinc. That's not an exhausted list. There are several other vitamins and minerals, but those are the main ones that are talked about. It should be possible to get all the vitamins and minerals someone needs from food, except vitamin D. I had a client ask me the other day, they said, Lily, if there's just one small habit I can start doing daily, what would you suggest? And I said, get in the sun for 10 minutes a day. You don't have to be sitting by a pool. You don't have to be wearing a tank top. Just getting the face in the sun, whether that be on someone's lunch break or when they're driving to work, you put your head out the window of your car. Any way to get in some sunshine, the vitamin D is going to be very helpful and beneficial for the immune system. Remember what happened back in March, 2020? Since then, there have been several reports that the majority of people who were getting sick were deficient in vitamin D. And yet we were telling people to stay inside when what could have really helped people was right outside their window for free. And so if someone's eating a carnivore diet and they're still having an underactive thyroid, they're tired all the time, they still get the cold frequently, then having more meat may not help because it doesn't have very much vitamin D. One of the foods highest in vitamin D is pasture-raised, sun-exposed egg yolks. Because if a chicken was not on the pastures, was not in the sun, that chicken's absorbing less vitamin D, that chicken's egg, its egg yolk, has less vitamin D in it. One conventional egg at the grocery store that was not a sun-exposed chicken, that is not pasture-raised, one egg is usually about 40 IU, the vitamin D, whereas a pasture-raised, sun-exposed chicken should have nearly five times as much vitamin D in the egg yolks. They're usually about 200 to 250 IUs of vitamin D. Now, the minimum recommendation for vitamin D to avoid deficiencies is 800 IUs. So that is very doable. You're like, okay, that's like four pasture-raised eggs. But again, that 800 number is to avoid deficiencies. That is not to have robust health, and that is not if someone already has a compromised immune system and they're trying to heal. Dr. Berg recommends the minimum amount of vitamin D someone would want to have, even if they're healthy, would be 5,000 IUs. Like, okay, so that's like 10 eggs a day. But then for people who are trying to overcome an autoimmune condition or who are trying to heal, he recommends anywhere from 10 to 20,000 IUs of vitamin D a day. So now we're talking like 100 pasture-raised eggs. And if you do that, you might start clucking and grow some feathers. So instead, I just say stand in the sun for 10 minutes a day. Other than vitamin D, people should be able to get all the vitamins and minerals they need from food, but if someone's eating a carnivore diet, then initially they may feel good. You know, 30 days, 60 days, six months, someone may not have any issues, but for many people, not everyone, but many people may run into electrolyte issues because there's just not enough magnesium in meat. But wait, what about Dr. Sean Baker and Dr. Anthony Chafee? They don't have any electrolyte issues and they say you can get all of the magnesium you need from meat. Yes, they can. The minimum recommendation to avoid deficiencies with magnesium is anywhere from 300 to 415 milligrams of magnesium, depending on age and gender. Now with two pounds of 80-20 ground beef or eating two pounds of ribeye, both have anywhere from 215 to 300 milligrams of magnesium, depending on the health of the cow, how it was raised, and the processing of the meat. So most people eating two pounds of meat a day, again, initially, probably fine. I wouldn't lose sleep over it, but in the long run, it could be like Dr. Paul Saladino, where they end up running into electrolyte issues. Dr. Sean Baker, he's eating like four to five pounds of meat a day. He's covered on magnesium. He should not run into electrolyte issues. He's eating four or five pounds of meat a day. But most of us aren't eating that much food. So if someone can tolerate plants, then that would be a way to have some more magnesium. But if someone can't tolerate plants, then I would consider supplementing because to me, 
it's not worth risking potentially causing myself an electrolyte issue in the long run. A brand I use and recommend for electrolytes is called Element. It's a very clean ingredient brand for electrolytes with no sugar or artificial ingredients. They even have a package that is unflavored with just three ingredients, sodium, magnesium, and potassium. I just take the packet, put it in my water, mix it on up, and I've got myself a nice electrolyte drink. And I'm someone who has run into electrolyte issues the longer I ate animal-based. I had more eye twitching and muscle cramping, but then by having more electrolytes, that really helped make those things go away. If you wanna check out Element, there's a link in the description that will get you eight additional packages for free with your order. Or if you go to the URL drinkelement.com slash lilycane, that's another way to get those eight additional packages with your order for free. I see many people who eat carnivore who say they're losing their hair, their menstrual cycle, they have less testosterone, they're not sleeping, they have less energy, more fatigue. And again, it's not that meat makes people People lose their hair or not sleep, it goes back to nutrients. Usually there's an imbalance in nutrients or a lack of nutrients, otherwise the person would be growing their hair, having lots of energy, and feeling good. Now animal foods are packed with nutrients, but are you eating enough? Because I find a lot of people tend to under eat, they're just not hungry to eat more food, and therefore if they're not eating enough food, they're not eating enough nutrients, and then they may not be giving their body all that it needs to function and operate properly. What I would suggest if someone's uncertain on whether or not they're eating enough or getting in enough nutrients is by going onto a website called Chronometer. It's free, it's what I use, I have no affiliation with them. What I do is plug in, okay, I had a can of sardines and eight ounces of ground beef, what does that give me? Or if I had two eggs and 16 ounces of ribeye, what nutrients does that provide? I had a client the other day ask if it's okay that they're not feeding their kids vegetables. And I said, well, if they're eating peanut butter jelly sandwiches and goldfish, they may benefit with some veggies, but otherwise I would just go on chronometer, plug in all the foods my kids ate that day and see for myself. What nutrients are they getting? Now, if someone's low in potassium for a day, I wouldn't worry about it. I care more about my weekly or my monthly overall nutrients. So if one day I'm lower in copper, well, I know later that week I'm going to have more oysters. So I kind of care more about big picture versus every single day I need to have every single vitamin and mineral in the right amount. I do say the closest thing to nature's multivitamin would either be eggs or liver. If someone can tolerate either of those or both of those, then it would give me more peace of mind knowing I'm getting a little bit of each micronutrient. I know most people, they don't like liver or they think it's weird. So having just a couple eggs a day, I think would be a really good idea. I don't do well with a ton of eggs in my diet. So I'll usually stick to more liver. And I say like an ounce of liver a day keeps the doctor away, but I don't eat an ounce of liver every single day because my liver comes in a pound frozen package. So once I thaw it, then I kind of just eat a lot of liver over the course of like a couple days, and then I won't have liver for like a couple weeks. So again, I care less about having every single vitamin and mineral every single day, and more about my weekly or my monthly vitamin and mineral intake. So that way, again, in the long run, I'm not potentially causing myself a nutrient deficiency. And so this is how I think about diet. I think of it in terms of what is the food giving my body? And I feel like over the years, the carnivore diet has shifted from nutrients to let's focus more on plants are poison, fiber's toxic, carbs are evil, and anybody who doesn't eat like me is doing it wrong. There's many ways people can eat to be healthy. I know so many people in their 80s and 90s who have robust health and they don't eat anything like a carnivore diet and they haven't been poisoned yet. If I ate a salad today, I'm not a bad person. I'm not a dingleberry. I'm not gonna fall over dead tomorrow and be poisoned. Again, some people may not do very well eating a lot of plants, but that's not everybody. It probably surprised people that 99% of the clients who I work with eat plants. Because even though I talk about the, the glories of meat, that doesn't mean I think that plants have no value to offer and are useless. That's where I've changed my mind on carnivore. It's that I used to just say, meat's healthy, nutritious, 
I eat a lot of meat, which then people would interpret me saying that to meaning therefore plants are useless and unhealthy. Now sometimes I feel like I gotta praise plants a little bit and talk about their benefits, otherwise I'm stimulating more cult-like thinking and people will shame their friends and family and hate on other people if they don't eat a carnivore diet. And your girl ain't never supporting hate, fear-mongering, and telling people that if they don't do it like me, then therefore they're doing it wrong. And I think sometimes people don't understand the why behind their action and they're more focused on is a food carnivore or keto friendly when I would focus my attention more on does the food provide me the nutrients my body needs. I'm gonna be putting now a what I eat in a day, no diet, no rules video soon. So if that interests you, make sure to subscribe. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching and how to create meal plans for you to get all the nutrients you need, I'd love to help you on your health journey. There's a link in the description to my coaching services. Otherwise, you guys, I hope you have a happy day and I'll see you in the next video.